Today, we'll be looking at Hearthstone cards, and I'm going to try to see if they're good or not. However, a little context. I did actually used to play Hearthstone in the past, so I know a lot more about Hearthstone than both Yu-Gi-Oh... No, not Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> I know more about Hearthstone than um, Magic the Gathering and Pokemans. The last time I played Hearthstone somewhat seriously had to have been more than five years ago. It was whenever, like, the eggs came out. Uh, Ungoro, I think. And even before then, I had quit for a while, and I didn't come back until, like, they released Lily and Voss in the game. Because I have a World of Warcraft channel. So, you know, I've been very Hearthstone adjacent because Hearthstone is based off of World of Warcraft. First up, we have Humongous Owl. It has a, uh, a death rattle. Deal 8 damage to a random enemy. Uh, 7 mana, 8 attack, 4 health. So it costs a ton of mana, it hits hard, and then it deals 8 damage to a random enemy, and I think this also means your opponent's player character as well, because it doesn't specify minion. So, this minion costs way too much mana to be viable. A 7 cost, the only way you're playing this is if you're cheating it out. Unless the game is slow enough where you can just summon a 7 cost minion. But 8 damage to your opponent? That seems like a really good death rattle to, um... It, the death rattle is like a floating effect for Yu-Gi-Oh people. That, that's a really good floating effect to try to proc multiple times. If you have a way to like proc this effect, that's really good. That's 8 damage, now that I'm thinking about it. I was gonna say, this seems garbage, but... I'm remembering that there are a lot of ways to proc death rattles in Hearthstone Battlegrounds. So in actual Hearthstone, there might be even more? This card is used in an OTK that's really annoying. Really? <laughs> is this actually a good effect? Enemy does include the opponent, yeah. Someone in chat said it's used in an OTK that's annoying, which means it's probably good. I'm gonna have to go and give this card a rating. Of, I don't think it's that good, honestly. Uh, it's it's too expensive. I can't imagine how the OTK is that great. Even though someone said it's using an OTK, it's probably not a very good OTK, is it? Warlock has a card that gives every single minion you've ever summoned a death rattle of a minion that died. A roller card that floods the boards. It's trash, in my opinion. It's completely shits on anything slow. I mean, if you can give this death rattle to a whole bunch of your minions, it's super good. This seems fun. I, I kind of want to try that. That sounds like a fun deck if I didn't hate how to play how constructed Hearthstone plays. <laughs> so uh, it seems as if my consensus was spot on. Awesome, let's go. Next we have Conjure Mana Biscuit. This is a mage card I believe because of the background. Add a biscuit to your hand that refreshes two mana crystals. So this card costs two mana. So you spend two mana to get a biscuit which can be used to give you two mana crystals. So it results in a non-net change in card advantage. Zero mana, get two mana. So I can only think of a use of using this card, like, if you're trying to save mana for a different turn. You know, maybe you throw out like a big, huge minion and you just need mana on a different turn, but you don't need it on the turn you use this. So immediately, this card is literally useless on the turn you use it, but I think it's probably a good combo set it up for other stuff. Using an OTK, a bad upstart, this seems broken because it means you can basically bank mana for your next round. In Spell Mage, they have a card that reduces the cost of all spells in your hand in your deck by one. Oh! So it's a plus one in in mana if you're able to get it like that. Use it with this and it's literally free mana. Oh. Okay. So that's pretty good then. Next up, we have Desperate Prayer. Zero mana, restore five health to each hero. This seems garbage. This is a terrible card. Because restoring health in Hearthstone, Hearthstone has a maximum health. You can't go above 30. Um, so you also don't want to give your opponent health. And only restoring health to your hero is not as big a deal as healing minion. So I'm just going to say this card's terrible. What do you guys, what, what does chat say? Terrible, never used, you can make healing effects deal damage to your opponent. Wait, they have bad reaction to Samochi? Oh yeah, they do. I remember, that, that card exists in the classic set. Don't underestimate zero cost spell. It heals both players though, that sounds terrible. Next up, we have Astral Communication. It's a, uh, an arcane card. Wait, does the other one have? Oh, it's a holy. I'm sure there's a mechanic for that. 
Um, so it costs four mana. It's a druid card, I believe, from the background. Gain ten mana crystals, discard your hand. So on turn four, at the cost of giving up your hand, you can get all ten of your mana crystals. I don't know. This seems kind of bad or really good. Because, like, what if you draw a ramp card? Not a ramp card. A draw card immediately. And then you just, like, draw a whole bunch of cards and you have ten mana and you can just outpace your opponent no problem. But also, what if you don't? Like, you're, you're top decking because you can't, like, set spell traps. I'm gonna say, before I look at chat, this card is probably mediocre. Let's look at chat. Huge meme card, very fun and very bad. Okay. <laughs> Astral Communication with such a boring deck. Huge meme card. Especially when Celestial Alignment power crept this to infinity. Celestial Assignment. Is a card better than this? What's the one that gives both players 10 mana? Next one. We have Emiris. Oh, I think I know this card. I think this card was back in the sets where I used to play. Um, Battlecry, double the attack and health of all minions in your hand. I remember this card sucked. It was a gimmick. Next one. We have Trogzogs the Earthenator. This card was from when I actually quit the game before I came back. So I don't know how this card works. Whenever your opponent casts a spell, summon a burly rock drog, rock jaw trog. Let me uh, look this up. Whenever your opponent casts a spell, gain plus two attack permanently. Whenever your opponent casts a spell, summon a burly rock jaw trog. So if they cast a spell to try to destroy Trogzar, they'll get out this card, which actually has pretty decent stats. Looks like it gains a lot of attack points. And if they don't try to destroy it, if they just attack it with a monster, hmm, this seems pretty good. This is a good card, isn't it? Let me look at chat. It is, it's a meme. This has got to be a meme, right? This is bad. Trogzar was super hyped, only be the worst legendary in the set. Oh my god. Okay, I don't know Hearthstone as much as I thought I did. That seemed, that seemed like a good card. Next one, Varian Rin. I remember this card. Battlecry, draw three cards, put any minions you drew directly into the battlefield. It costs 10 mana, which means that's all you're doing for your turn because you can only have 10 mana. And it's a warrior card. Warriors don't really have ways to gain extra mana. Um, draw three minions, put them directly into the battlefield if you drew any minions. I don't remember how good this card was but I vaguely remember it either being good or bad. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go over, this card was probably good in Control Warrior. What about, uh, what, what does chat say? Control Warrior, love that one? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Cause like, Control Warrior plays a whole bunch of really big minions, so if you get to cheat them out, that sounds pretty good. Especially if you drew some taunt minions to survive for a turn. If you draw minions, you're screwed, but actually relatively violent. You were screwed if you drew minions, what? It's good, but generally Control Warriors didn't run it because it caused you to lose the mirror? Well, I guess. Next one, Ignite. It's a fire spell. Deal two damage. Shuffle and Ignite into your deck that deals one more damage. Does this, does the next one you, sh you use also shuffle another version into your deck? Ignite, let me see. The card it shuffles into your deck, is it just an exact copy that deals one more damage? So if you keep drawing it, it also gives you unlimited cards in your deck. This is part of a tier 1 spell mage deck. Get that off my screen now. <laughs> Best spell in the game right now. Really? Why? I hate that card. This is why I quit Hearthstone. Huge part. This thing basically wins the game by itself. Literally. Does it actually make another copy of itself that just deals one more damage then you draw it and you can use it not the best just a ton of burn damage better version of magical blast oh it's still two damage to anything two mana two damage that's kind of bad but the effect seems good where you return it to your deck that deals one more damage and does it like infinitely increase like the next one you use deals three damage and then it shuffles a four damage one into your deck Two mana, four damage. Oh, plus one for each one forever. Oh, okay, that sounds good. I can see why. Without it, the entire mage quest line falls apart. In quest mage, mages have a very powerful draw engine. With this being as it is, you can very easily deal 30 plus damage in a turn. Oh. Sounds good if you can keep casting it, as the next card will always deal one more damage in the card that shuffled it in. Oh. Yeah, I would have never have guessed that. I would think, hey, this is a neat card. Probably not that good actually meta defining what do you know next one celestial alignment oh someone mentioned this 
set each player's mana to zero. Um, set the cost of all cards in hands and decks to one. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Can't imagine that's bad. Seven mana, though. Wait, is it good? You guys did say it was good, right? You would just mention this. It's like Hearthstone two years ago. Terrible card. That's exactly what it is. It's a terrible card, really? I thought you guys said it was good. That seems like a decent effect. Very good. It's pre-nerf. It's eight mana now. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it was too good. Next one, we have Horrendous Growth. Two mana, two, two. Corruption. Gain plus one, plus one. It can be corrupted endlessly. What? So, um, I did look into... <laughs> I did look what corrupted meant before the stream. Corrupted means if you play a, a card from your hand that has more mana than the card, so two in this case, then it procs the corruption effect, which is to gain plus one plus one. However, corruption only works once, so if you play a three cost mana, it will corrupt. But it also has the effect where you can corrupt endlessly, which means if you play another three cost mana, it corrupts again, so you can just buff this card like crazy in your hand. Corrupted cards is good. Okay, before I see if this is good or not. If you can keep increasing the cost of this in your hand by just keeping it there, then you can just kind of throw this down later in the game as like a 10-10 minion that costs 2 mana. Which sounds... That does sound good, but like, it's just a sitting target. If you have two of them, that's harder to deal with. I don't know, I'm gonna say this card's probably good. What do you guys say? It only really sees constructed and corrupted priests, but in arena, this is a very good card. Mmm. Very slow and low impact, really. So it's zero mana? How do you get it to zero mana? There's a priest card that lowers mana cost of corrupted cards by two. Oh, oh wow. It just reminds me of like those golem or giant decks in the past where you just summon a whole bunch of giants in one turn. And even though they can't attack, it was really hard for your opponent to just deal with a whole bunch of big beat sticks on the field at once. Next one, we have Ice Howl. Nine cost, 10, 10. Ooh, look at those stats. Those stats are, um, yeah, they're, they're good for the mana cost. It's just nine is a lot. Wait, is it good? I think the mana cost needs to be, yeah, two higher, which this covers. Charge, can't attack heroes. This is definitely an old ass card before they added Rush to the game. Because this is literally just Rush. So it's a 9 mana Rush card with 10 attack and 10 health. This seems bad. This is probably really bad at that. This card is actually good in Arena or it used to be a long time ago. Saw 0 plane constructed is good in Arena. Well Arena doesn't really matter though. I can see why this saw no play in Constructed though, because it doesn't seem super good unless you have a way to cheat it out, but even then, just attacks monsters only. Worse than a Rush card, because it constantly can't attack heroes. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even think of that. It can just never attack heroes. Oh shit. The background is making me dizzy. I'll have to remember to change it to something else. And you can't cheat it out because it's non-tribal. Next up, we have the Idol of Yashiraj. Eight mana card, summon a 10-10 copy of a minion in your deck. This seems, I remember I used to play this deck back in the day with the original Yashiraj, where at the end of your turn, it would just cheat a card out of your deck. And the way you would play it is just have a whole bunch of spells that allowed you to stall out until turn four where you could start summoning monsters from your deck. This seems like it would be really good in that deck. Idol of Yashiraj is good, using a lot of priest decks, nerfed barns. Yeah, D Barnes, he was like a, he was he was big in that deck. Like you really wanted to draw Barnes immediately because you didn't want to summon him from the deck. Big Priest was so annoying, man. I loved Big Priest, kind of. It was kind of annoying to play. If I if I actually loved it, I probably would have kept playing the game, but it, it was all right. I, I liked it enough. Just reminds me of that. Next up, we have Korak the Blood Rager, Death Rattle. If this wasn't honorably killed, resummon Korak. What's honorable kill? New keyword, honorable kill. Sometimes the damage lines up perfectly and it just feels so right. Cards with the honorable kill keyword grant you a bonus effect when they use exact damage to kill an enemy minion on your turn. Oh. So if you don't deal exactly its health and damage to it, it comes back. It's super sticky and annoying, used a lot. I can see it's only four mana and it's hard to destroy. 
By the way, destroy effects don't count as an honorable kill, so you can't just siphon salt. Wait, what? It's immune to destroy effects too? So you have to kill this with exactly 5 damage, otherwise he doesn't die. Well, you can just spin this card back to the deck though, like, I guess it's immune to destruction effects, but not spinning. Hmm, because destruction does count as killing it, I guess. It's a neutral card, can be cheated out, pretty good, cool art. Some decks have a hard time dealing with 6 with it, and it's fun to cop- Oh, you can copy the card? Yeah, this was YGH, it's basically only killable by battle. Not many shuffle into the decks. I remember Psychic Scream shuffled cards into the deck. I see. Huh. That card's kind of crazy. Maiev Shadow Song. Four mana. Battle Cry. Choose a minion. It goes dormant for two turns. I know what dormant means. Because this this is a hero available in Battlegrounds. It means the card just kind of takes up space on the board and can't be interacted with. So, and you can choose your opponent's minion, so you can just kind of remove one of your opponent's minions from the f game for two turns on four mana with decent-ish stats. They're not good for a four mana card, but they're not bad either. Um, this seems like a good form of removal. What does chat say? Arena card? Yeah, I'm not quite sure about this card. I'd say it's pretty good. Not used? No real reason to use it instead of just removing outside of gimmick demon hunter decks. But there aren't a lot of four mana cards that can just remove a minion from the game for Not an instant inclusion in any deck though? Really? It was sort of hyped but saw close to no play. Oh yeah, I guess one of the problems with Hearthstone is that it's super combo heavy. Like you don't play any decks that just have generic cards. You need to have some kind of combo going. I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh is kind of the same way. But even then, like a card needs to be a really good staple to be included inside those combos. And I guess Maiev is not a good enough staple to be included in combo decks. Basically a turn 2 banish. Exactly, it was using Demon Hunter to remove annoying taunt minions. I see. I don't know, I could see this card scene play in a... a more fairer meta. Okay, Patches the Pirate. After you play a pirate, summon this minion from your deck. Well, this one doesn't have charge on it. Yeah, I know this card. This card's broken as hell. It was way more broken back when I had charge on it. <laughs> this card... If this card existed in Yu-Gi-Oh, it would be so good. It would be like the most broken shit ever. It's just a card which summons itself from the deck if you just play a minion of a certain type. Best card ever printed? Uh, I don't know about that. It's just a one-cost minion. And they don't exactly have uh, Link summoning in Hearthstone. Used to be tier zero? Yeah, I knew it was a good card. I know this, like, it's just free advantage from your deck. There's nothing wrong with that, especially if you, like, make copies of it. Or if you increase the damage of it. Now it's terrible, they eroded it. Yeah, they, they removed its charge ability. <laughs> Weren't they unnerfing cards? They raided it. He used to have a, a line where he would come in and say, I'm in charge, and they removed it when they eroded his charge. But they've been like unnerfing cards. I don't know if they would ever unnerf this one because it's really good. It used to be very good before they removed its charge. I mean, even without a charge, it's still good. It's like extra minions on the board. Well, I guess not without, if you can't really use it for anything. I don't know if Hearthstone really uses cards for anything like Yu-Gi-Oh does. Still in every pirate deck? I'd imagine so, it's a free card from your deck. Arata and Yu-Gi-Oh, nerf is Hearthstone is what I mean. Oh, well, same thing. When they nerf cards in Hearthstone, that means they errata them. This is a really bad Garnet to get. Yeah, that's true. Very bad Garnet. Yeah, he's like, he's like the Hearthstone Garnet. Because he's useless in your hand. Since he only specials himself from the deck. Next up, we have Trampoline Rhino. 5 mana, 5-5. Five, five. Rush, after this attack, kills a minion, excess damage hits the enemy hero. This seems like too much mana for such a mediocre effect. I'm gonna say this is a mediocre card. Oh boy, Staple Card and Face Hunter, definitely tier 0. Really? Used in every single Hunter deck and ranked right now? Oh yeah, I guess it's a Rush card that actually deals damage to your opponent. But you still take the damage. Oh, okay. Well, I was way off with this one. It's so damn annoying. Punch the opponent for playing minions. That's hilarious. It's basically a charge minion. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. It can be duplicated very easily. 5 for a 5-5 five five is typical. The effect seems small, but running over a small minion would definitely be good. Yeah, I guess I didn't really think of the implications that it's basically a charge minion attack into something small. Okay, Mr. Smite. Your pirates have charge. 
This is a pirate, which means it has charge. So it's a six cost minion with six health, six attack that has charge, and it gives all your pirates charge, including Patches the pirate. I'm gonna say this card is really good because Hearthstone is like afraid of charge. Like they cower at the thought of giving a monster charge. They hate charge more than anything in the world. So what does is, what is chat say? Tier one, not the best, but very good. I thought this card would be like broken. Second copy of Leroy Jenkins? Yeah, it's like Leroy, except cost more mana. Is it really tier zero? I see, see people say tier... I mean, either way, you guys are saying that this card is good. I can't imagine this card's bad, though. Let's see here. Refreshing Spring Water. Five mana. Draw two cards. Refresh two mana crystals for each spell drawn. So five mana, draw two. That sounds kind of bad. But if you draw two spells, then it's basically a one mana draw two, which seems too risky. You'd have to play this in a deck that basically only plays spells. And if you did that, then it's a one mana draw two, which is good. I'm gonna say this card was probably good. Literally Pot of Greed, really good spell? Okay, that's good enough. Got nerfed, it was four mana? Oh, okay. Yeah, four mana, it would be an easy, like, yeah, it's pretty good. At five mana, you still lose one mana, but you draw two cards? Yeah, it's still pretty good. Just as long as you play a deck that only really has a whole bunch of spells. If you draw two monsters, garbage. Terrible card. Worst thing ever. Two spells? Yeah, that's pretty good, I guess. Next up, we have Kayan Sunfury. Legendary minion, 3-4, four, 4 mana, charge, all friendly attacks, ignore taunt. So, I didn't know they had a card that allowed you to ignore taunts. And he's also a charge minion. And I, uh, Blizzard hates charge minions. I'm gonna assume this card was really good. Bad? What? <laughs> Ignoring taunts is bad? Nerf had 5 HP before? Hey, if it was nerfed, that means the effect was good. It's not really using Demon Hunter decks anymore. Source of early Demon Hunter hate? No, it's good. Very funny minion involved into. Used to have 5 health, but it's still very powerful for Demon Hunter. Yeah, I thought so. It's a charge minion. They hate charge minions, but it also ignores taunts. You can just go face like no problem. I don't know how Demon Hunters play though. I, I never played them. I don't think I have Demon Hunters unlocked because I don't care. Next up, uh, Tenaris Hog Chopper. Battle Cry, if your opponent's hand is empty, gain charge. I don't remember this card, but I think this card was around when I used to play the game, which means it's probably really bad. <laughs> it has charge. It's a four mana card with charge, which is decent. But only if your opponent has no cards in their hand? How often does that happen? Almost never. Gimmick saw zero play because the condition is too hard to achieve. Very good in arena. Never used in ranked or cash. <laughs> Very good in arena. <laughs> I can't imagine this card is good in anything. Its stats are not really worth the chart. I don't know. I, I highly underestimate charge because it just seems like such a funny thing to me. I don't know why Blizzard just doesn't embrace charge rather than having you jump through hoops to gain the effect. Yashiraj the Defiler. 10 mana card. Battle Cry. Add a copy of each corrupted card you've played this game to your hand. They cost zero this turn. Hmm. Yeah, it's probably a good card. I'm gonna say this is this is probably a good card. Having zero cost minions, adding them from nowhere. It's a lot of card advantage. You can play them immediately. Uh, I was gonna say tier zero, but it's very slow. It's really slow. Well, I mean, it's 10 manas, I guess so. If you control mirror, it's tier zero. Clown Druid loves this card. Clown Druid? Value card, strong late game. It seems strong. It seems really strong, but it just costs 10 mana. Usually 10 mana cards, like the game's usually over by then. All right, Humongous Owl. Oh, that's it. That's all of them. 